So if we were to go and take a look at this um, in the graph again, now, if you guys remember, we did homework and I did explanations of graphing piecewise functions, but that was with no transformations. You basically were just given a parent graph, you graphed it, and then one like less than zero, one grand zero. Well, now we have a little bit of some transformations to apply, right? So again, understanding that what each function is, and as well as its transformations, is very, very helpful to graph a piecewise function. So let's go and take a look at our first function. Now, this one, we need to understand what the parent graph is, right? The parent graph for this is f of x equals the square root of x, which is your square root function, which is all the way over here. Does everybody, me, everybody agree with me that's the square root function? Yes? So I know what the parent graph looks like. It looks something like that, right? It doesn't need to be perfect, but that's what the square root function looks like. Now, we need to understand what the transformations are. Again, like we practice again today, we want to make sure we rewrite this as f of x equals the square root of 4 minus 2x. I'm going to rewrite that as a negative 2x plus 4. Factor out the negative 2. You can see that I have a compression or a vertical, uh, yeah, vertical compression as well as a fraction and a horizontal. So I got to factor that out. So I factor out the negative 2x. I'm left with a x minus 2. Wait. Yes. Ah, crap. I wanted that to go to the right. Yeah, well, crap. Um, you know what? I'm going to change the problem. I apologize. For those of you that graphed it, it's not going to be much different. I just want to do this just for this purpose. Again, if you graph, I just want to try to be more exact because I, I made a mistake entering it. But let's just change this to a negative 4, because again, I made up this problem. So does everybody see if this was a negative 4? You still have to factor out the negative 2. But now you see this changes to x plus 2, which is the event which I wanted, which I wanted you guys to get. Does everybody see? Yes, question. Why do you factor out the x? I'm not factoring out the x, though. I'm just factoring out the negative 2. Does everybody see the, what I have done so far? So now I see this negative 2. And again, remember, identify our transformations. We're multiplying by negative inside the function. So therefore, that is a reflection about the y-axis. So we can reflect y-axis. I'm, I'm not asking you to write down the transformations, but you guys should know these. You have 2 which is a 2, which is larger than 1. So that means it's going to be a horizontal compression. So I'm just going to write these down there so we remember them. Horizontal compress factor of 2. And then I have plus 2, which is telling me to shift left 2 units. So here's my parent graph. This graph is now being reflected about the y-axis. It's being compressed horizontally, which is kind of like the same thing as vertical shift. And it's being shifted two units to the left. Would you guys agree with my, oh wait, sorry. Yes, that's correct. OK, would everybody agree with my somewhat of a graph? with these transformations. Again, not using any graphing technology. Wait, is this an open circle? It is an open circle. Well, I have a, I'm, I'll get to the, those values anyway in a second. Um, I'm just gra I just want to graph what this function looks like for right now. Then we go into the absolute value. The absolute value function, y equals absolute value of x. You guys should know this from algebra 2. You shouldn't use, need a graphing calculator to graph the absolute value function. 1 over 1 up 1. It's a nice little over one, up one. It's a nice V-shaped graph. Positive one going to the right, negative one going to the left. Then we just I look at our functions, our transformations. Uh, equals absolute value of x plus 2 plus 1. So we're going left two units, up one unit. So it's basically the exact same graph. moved 
to the left two units. Everybody agree with me? Okay. And now all of piecewise function, ladies and gentlemen, is we're just putting these on the same graph. That's all you're doing. So you can graph these separately. You're just going to put them on the same graph and then apply the constraint. This one is over at 2, um, open circle. Okay, it's not the best drawings, but here's two graphs. I only want to graph my quadratic or my radical for x values that are less than negative 2. Well, here's when x is equal to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So for x values that are less than negative 2 are going to be going to the left, right? So therefore, all of that graph exists. I'm going to only graph the absolute value functions for x values that are greater than or equal to negative 2. Well, the only values that are greater than or equal to negative 2 are only the graph that's going to the right. So therefore, this example of the graph does not exist. Remember, it's greater than or equal to is that the absolute value, and it's an open circle right here. So that's what my graph looks like. Now let's go and talk about domain and range. The domain. The domain is the set of all x values. How far basically to the left does the graph go? How far to the right does it go? So does graph, how far is left does this graph go? Negative infinity. How far to the right does it go? Infinity. But we've got to be careful. We can see there's a discontinuity here, right? So we've got to make sure that discontinuity is still part of the domain. So again, we look. Um, at negative 2, is this function equal at negative 2? No, right? But for the absolute value, though, it is. So we got 2 is covered. 2 is an x value that's in this function. But at 2.0001, uh, again, that function is covered. At, one, at negative, I'm sorry, negative 2.0001, just to the left of that, it's equal. So the only hole, we have like one little continuity, but our value is equivalent. So we're good for the domain. The range is a set of all y values, basically saying how low does the graph go, how high does it go. And we can see the lowest the graph goes is 0. And 0 is not contained, so it's a parenthesis. And then that goes all the way up to infinity. Okay. I will remind you um, on your quiz, I think almost every single question. I